My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 6,105 kilometres so far and I've got 10,495 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits, and in this episode, we sneak past the police, I push the boundaries of fashion, we forage for our dinner, and discuss how it all began. How does it feel to be in your natural habitat as a lion in the jungle? I don't think there's many lions knocking around here, lad. Do you feel any shame or any pride? Do you do what you need to to stay strong and to survive? Uh. Wait, wait. What song is that? Hold on, don't tell me. <laughs> what is it? Da -na 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 oh, slaves. Yeah. What do you need to do to stay strong and to survive at the moment? Oh, I just need to f keep running. Just keep running. Get out of the jungle would be a good one. Yeah, it would be. How are you finding it so far? Yes. Yeah, all the time. A lot of bugs. Lots of bugs. Lots of Very hot. We heard some banging from within the van last night. Was there anything good? I was gonna murder him, spree. Yeah, yeah, shame. Silence of all the fallen higher heroes. F them all. <laughs> Every single one of them. This is a war criminal right now. The great war crimes of 2023 against moths. <laughs> See, if I didn't know any better, knowing that you were the hardest geezer in the world, I'd think that you're a little bit, a little bit boogs out by certain insects. I just don't like it when I'm sleeping and there's insects flying around. What about when you're awake? How are you enjoying the food situation out here in the jungle? How are you enjoying it? We, we pretty much just eat evening meals at the moment. You obviously have the biggest calorie need. So it's most worrying for you. But there's just not that much out here. I wouldn't mind just a big fat juicy burger right about. Made from monkey, right? Because that's what you have on order. I think it would taste more like a burger but made of human. Mmm, so sweet eh? Apparently humans taste like sweet beef according to scientists. What do you think Russ would taste like? He runs a lot, so I, I imagine he would taste kind of like a decrepit cow. Do you remember when we went to Namibia and they fed us that chicken and they were like, oh yeah, this is a runner chicken and it was really f***ing tight. Oh yeah. Like, the meat would be all stringy on. Yeah. Mm. You wouldn't be able to eat me as well because I'd beat the f*** out of you lad. Right, have a good one. I will. Enjoy this massive hill to start. That's right, it's like a little baby hill. I need a little baby hill. Once again, I smashed out into the jungle on another beautiful scorcher of a day. The rainforest was getting thicker every day and I took in the beauty of this incredible place. Everything in the jungle is alive. Even though we hadn't seen much large wildlife, every inch of the place was full of critters, most of which wanted a bite of my ginger flesh. I stomped the tarmac hard to get away from the bugs and into the safety of the van. Going with the barefoot life now, guys. When, uh, when it's possible, I always try to yeah. to be barefoot. It's hard to keep doing it continuously because, like, often life just doesn't allow yeah, yeah, yeah. us to be barefoot. So I tried to do the bare, whole barefoot thing for a while. Didn't really go that well. Climb the mountain barefoot, cut up on my feet. The tricky thing is, like, you know, bacteria here, infections. Yeah. It's like so f risky. I've seen the weirdest infections of people. Like I met one time this guy. He was like laying next to me, like in the in the hospital bed. He just scraped his knuckles with a motorbike accident, and that way bacteria were able to enter, and they were eating up the skin of his whole arm from the inside. Inside. Jesus. Just because he had a few little scrapes here. So we've discovered that those massive cough flies or also massive bitey flies. Did you say that they kill people as well? Especially a few decades back, there was a really big problem here in Africa with like horse fly type of flies. They would carry insomnia disease. Oh, so sleeping sickness. Yeah, sleeping yeah, sickness. yeah. Good, good, good. vibes, good vibes. Good vibe. Yeah, so I'll continue murdering everything I see in this van that's flying. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I'm with Russ for once. Wow, that's excessive. actually cut you, bro. Yeah, man, it's excessive, really. All right, he's gonna hit the road. Russ Cook, lining up, and he's gone. Look, I was aiming for a bit of better drama, but he's not really wanting he's not really into the drama. He's not. Shoes firmly on, I hit the road. I was starting to get a bit tired of this life. Hot weather used to be the dream, but now all I wanted was to sit in an ice bath in the middle of Antarctica eating a Ben and Jerry's. Unfortunately, this wasn't going to be a reality for a long time. Suck it up and crack on. Tough one? That's the same person as all. Mate, it's hot though, ain't it? 
36 degrees. Peak was, we clocked 37. That's one degree off your hottest day ever. Good, good. What's the hottest day everyone's ever been in? I've been in a 42 in Kalakadi. I ran a marathon in 40 months. Yeah. Mate, 41 in York was the hottest day I've ever had. 41 in New York? Yeah, man. Global warming. Cool. Yeah, that was, do you not remember that heat wave? We had a heat wave where almost everywhere in the UK went over 40. The north is actually hotter than the south for the first time. There was like 42 in f***ing Doncaster, mate. Oh, I don't know, I remember that. I don't know. Maybe you were asleep or something. Why did you put the sodas underneath the left bed and not underneath the right bed? Your stand. We tried to make us lose everything. Say it to the camera, guys, if you really mean it. Stanley, you mother f <laughs> <laughs> Stop unorganizing my stuff. When I put all the sodas underneath the right bed, you're also gonna put the fucking sodas underneath the right bed. And not underneath the left bed. I fed up with this world. You got that, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go ahead. Because me and Gus technically aren't allowed to be here at all. So we're gonna try and smuggle ourselves through this stop, which could be nothing, but it sounds like they're quite a bit more thorough than most. Let's have a practice. I'm the border guard. Go on, in your best French. All right, Keith, uh, how many of you in the van? Um, three, I mean one. <laughs> <laughs> You've got valid passports, yeah? No, I mean, yes. <laughs> cool, <understanding>. training done. <laughs> My God, is that a French aristocrat? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and the sunglasses go out as well. <laughs> Fucking devil wears Prada. I'm a gangster and a fashion icon. There's just nothing anyone can do. About. Can you just give a little look to camera? <laughs> Dude. Maybe keep the glasses on, actually. You look a little bit unhinged under the glasses. Just a couple of bibs, no house. <laughs> right then, garage sale water rally, let's go. You look like you've been told that there's a fancy dress party and you need to dress as an explorer, but you had about five minutes and one charity shop to do it in. All I'm hearing is that I look f***ing fantastic. I <laughs> know. Oh, Fabulous is the word, the term we use. I rate you. it. Bon to shag. You're going to go full pirate. That sun ain't getting me today, boy. <laughs> Is this a look? Is this as much of a look as it, as it feels? <laughs> this is the hardest look I've ever seen you in. Go on then. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, well it's good. You're getting absolute gold out here, bruv. My glow up gave me the confidence I needed to smash up the tarmac harder than ever before. I was an icon, a pioneer, a maverick, and I felt fabulous. Everybody passing by turned to stare at my incredible looks. And even the tarmac gave way out of sheer respect. Louis Vuitton was about to get stomped on. As I passed the checkpoint, the guards were so dazzled by my drip that they let me straight through as I neared the finish line. But I wasn't sure my support band full of ugly, sweaty men would have as much luck. Bonjour, monsieur. Ça va? Ça va. Pardon, pas les petits, petits français. J'ai pas les anglais. Ah, 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 c'est bon? Merci beaucoup. But somehow, they got through. No questions asked. Bang, bang. Oh, How are you doing? Itch. You're itchy. Interesting. That's a new one. Well, 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 well. I think it's the combination of like sweat and then water. Good evening, girls and boys. You join me for this session. This session of uh, Glass Pine with Russ. Today, I've got a bucket, like always. I was actually gonna go to the river, but it looks a bit mean. Big 60 k's in today. It also rained loads, which is good because it kind of starts the bath off for me. Proper in the jungle, mate. You know, I'm basically f***ing Tarzan now. Hit those vitals, bruv. Oh, I'm a f***ing rogue looking individual these days. What a humbling experience, the bucket bath. Just crouched over a small bucket of soapy water in the Congo rainforest and I've still got about 11,000 k's to run. Ah. <laughs> right, I think it's time to get me caught out, girls and boys, so I'm going to turn the camera off because this is a PG channel. Gangsters, it's been a pleasure. 
the We've just been having debate, places. boys and girls, about what country is the best in the world. <laughs> I've been pitching the UK hard out here. Uh, Gus has been... Well, to be fair, Gus has not really been pitching Netherlands too much. I don't like Netherlands that much, but I, I think it's just less. much better than UK. And guys have been like... Hilariously trying to pitch stuff. <laughs> not even trying to pitch it, just <laughs> accepting that it's not true. But we are still probably better than the UK. I really like South Africa. To be fair. I love South Africa. If you would see the Midlands and you need to experience the fucking drinking tent in the tiny town while the mist is settling in the valley, that sounds pretty good. Actually. It's a fucking vibe. Yeah. Cool. I mean, we got Greg's so. <laughs> though. We do have Greg. We have Greg. Nah, f f f your pies. Yeah, your Greg. pies are I'm shit. God. Their pies are excellent, but Greg's, uh, Greg's, your Greg's pies is God's are 7 day. out of 10. Ours are 10. Have you ever been to Greg's before? To? Greg's. The bakery. Uh, uh, you know. ah, mate, these well, your pies might be. Like, I don't be even ten. know what they're missing out on, man. Your pies might be 10 out of 10. Let's not even talk to them. It actually upsets me. The How can you even debate me on what the best country is if you've never been to Greg's, bro? <laughs> I think this conversation's over. Should we go and, Do you want to go and yeah. run? Ugh, what a bunch of muppets, eh? I don't know what they're talking about. I'm the least patriotic person in the world. I think the UK is shit, but I'm, nah, I'm angry. I'm angry about this. It's my shit though. Shout something aggressive into the camera. Your mum! Dreaming of a Greg sausage roll, not sponsored. I hit the early morning tarmac once again, and just the thought of the golden buttery pastry was enough to spur me forward. I felt good this morning, enjoying the call before the sun took hold and taking in the sights. The first stop was in a stunning village nestled within the rainforest. I run past tens of these every day without ever appreciating them, but they really are beautiful, full of life and incredible handiwork in the depths of such harsh climate. <laughs> Wasn't expecting the hero's welcome, but here we go. Mate, it's actually making me so sad that we nearly ran out of perfect heads. Got a lot in the way. Got about 40 kilos. Yeah. Mm. Can't come soon enough, that. It that not, bad. It's Fuck. not. This thing just has a fucking flower on its asshole. Look at it. Whoa, what the fuck? Its asshole like opens into a flower. Look at that. That's wild. Oh, I bet that stings though. You look really fucked, mate. I can't lie. Yeah. Always what? less fucked than perfect Ted in my hand. Nice one. Uh, with Royce back we go. <laughs> Some boys have come over. Um, one of them's charging his laptop with our solo. Uh, we thought he was going to do some work, but they've just been sat there listening to music and watching Congolese memes for yeah. the last hour and a half. Hard vibe. Got any struts for the upcoming hills? I ain't got any new tactics, guys. I can't lie. What are your old tactics? Just fucking keep going. I feel like you need to diversify a bit. Yeah. What, maybe like just not keep going? Yeah. Oh, the it's coming back out. Yesterday was more of like a like charity shop explorer. Now it's more of like a charity shop Jesus. Maybe a charity shop Mary, actually. Oh, I stinks. Might have to take it off to be fair. It smells that bad. Have you ever seen anyone more swole? I'm not even going to flex it. It won't fit in the camera. Sorry. I was talking about Gus. <laughs> you got a black I've got, got three black belts. And you've got a world championship. Yeah, dude. Anyway, yeah, I can't too. believe you baited him, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. All right. All right. Let's go, go, go. Oh, f oh he's, he always takes me by surprise because he just goes. There's no like build up anymore. What an asshole. I know. This stretch was unreasonably hilly. My elevation for the last few days had been steadily increasing, and this was no exception. I thought it was pretty harsh, to be honest. Mother Chop, he knew I was doing 60k a day and she'd already thrown me deadly insects in the heat of nuclear explosion. So adding an entire mountain every day was just a bit overkill. But ladies and gents, the game is the game, and I pushed on through, up and down rolling slopes of the jungle to my next stop. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. How we doing on them hilly roads? How them right. leggies doing? They're looking pretty aggressive today. They're just like angry. Sylvania and bonery. This is free foot content for all of you guys. When was the last time you showered, bruv? It's been a while, bro. I thought I was thinking about a nana. Bucket bath time. Yeah. I actually do it, it's great. I had my first bucket bath the other night and never looked back. I would, wouldn't mind a nice little river, to be fair. Hmm. Just a bucket bath. A little full dip would be nice, clean, yeah. Like river you could get through on clean. Explain to us the tactic of the tucked shirt. It looks smart, I think, doesn't it? 
See, I was expecting like a well, it creates like makes you more lean and less baggy, less wind resistance, you know. Nah, no, I just think it looks smarter, innit? Enjoy your run! <laughs> bye bye! <laughs> oh, look at that in the middle of the f***ing road, lad! <laughs> oh, Stan, walking behind you. No, carry on walking. It just feels very dramatic at this point. Like everything in soft focus. You're really close. Dun, dun. Who are we gonna hit? Go hit, guys. Hit him. Make the, make the action movie work. Dun, 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 dun. Where is he? Where is he? Ready? That rap scallion. <laughs> Blissfully unaware of Gus's mortal wounds, I motored on up more brutal hills towards the end. I was moving slow now, determined not to break my streak of 60k days. So I powered through. Meanwhile, the boys visited the river to gather water. Gosh is off to get us some water for washing. It's really nice, it's really, really clear the water. We were just talking about like the red in the water. It's tannins that stain it from something. So we were saying this is probably, like it could be the trees and stuff like over there. Probably we won't drink it, but we use it to wash and whatnot. But um. Yeah, the local village will be drinking it, I'm sure. Est-ce que c'est de l'eau potable? It's drinking water. Oh yeah? <laughs> Yo. How's it going? What's this cafe? Not sure, I think it's a, like an abandoned police stuff or something, but... Oh, f***ing right. It works. It's a cool little campsite, we've got a roof. With a humongous spider, but there's a roof. Yeah, it's a snake head, a boa that's been lobbed off, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, buff ASAP. Yeah? Sticky one. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Good, good. Right, enjoy your bath. Cheers, mate. So, Russ. So. Three days left in the Republic of Congo. Uh, I don't think much is going to change, to be honest. Especially for the first bit, anyway. Because we're still in the jungle. Apparently the street food changes quite a lot. Yeah, Gus reckons it's good. Like chocolate pancakes on every corner, which is a vibe. I'm liking the new style today, Russ, mate. Is this a new style or an old style? It's a new style with the f***ing the tassel through your glasses. Yeah, f***ing innovator, mate, what can I say? It's like, it's like impressions of an eye patch with no eye patch, you know what I mean? It's cool. Yeah. Alright, the uh, back when you Oh, look at that, a nice fat pocket. <laughs> Enjoy. All hope of things getting flatter went out the window fast. This was the first big hill, but certainly not the last, as the elevation got more and more intense. I was growing used to it and powered on indifferent, but it still sapped my energy and took a huge toll on my body. Come on in. The most shots I have of Russ is bending into the cooler box. Those calories in, bruv. Get some calories in. What's been a really big like learning curve on this mission for you in regards to like content? There's, I think there's lessons in like every area of making content. Fit so, probably one of the things that, about YouTube is that like it's definitely evolved in the last decade. Whereas like before, the standard on YouTube was one guy running, vlogging, editing it, editing himself, and just uploading it, and that was like that was like the bang of content on YouTube. Whereas now it's more like you know the standard for YouTube content is is like close to TV standard really in a lot of ways if, if not better like to make really really high level YouTube content you probably you need like a whole production team really it's hard to do that when there's only like a couple of you in it do you know what I mean I don't know I'd say probably the one of the biggest overall lessons is that if you want people to click on your content and you've got to provide them something that's worth clicking on you have to be humble in that way like like it has to be worthwhile and that's like quite a lot of pressure really mm. when you think about it Talk to me about the importance of content creation for this mission. Do you think you would still be doing this if yeah. it wasn't for content creation? You know, people say a lot of shit about social media these days and, and, you know, there is some bad points about it. But ultimately, one of the key benefits is that it's given people like me social mobility in the way that I didn't need to go and get a TV deal to come and do Project Africa. I could take a lot of f***ing risks, you know, riddle myself with debt, convince a few people to come along and do it with me but it's possible to do it from scratch basically and this is possible for people i mean because it wasn't before yeah that's why like every explorer adventurer blah 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 you've ever seen that's done anything like this with a team and a van and of cameras and shit has always been like from money or middle class or you know but it's possible in 2023 
to do it with none of that mm. cause of content, which is cool. I'm living in a flat with my mate and we're just scheming. I think doing running the entire length of Africa would would be sick, like, I'd love to do it, but I like, don't know how I'm going to do it. And then it, I was like, you know, maybe I'll get an investor, maybe this, maybe that, blah, blah, blah. At that point, basically, there was like so many hurdles to overcome to even get to a point where this felt like a realistic idea instead of one that was just a fucking pipe dream. I was just like floating, fucking floating some messages out of there, and I thought, Stephen Bartlett said, gee, I'm going to message him and see if uh, see if I can get a reply. I obviously, didn't get a reply. You know, people are busy, and also, a lot of people do this. A lot of people talk, but action is more important, which is why getting to the start line and getting started was so important so that people like Stephen were like, oh, he's actually doing it. You know, like, he's actually legit. But yeah, I messaged him trying to just float in a fucking rogue message to see if I get an investment out of him. <laughs> but you know, like it was a, it was a stupid message. It was filled with shit. But ultimately, like it, a year later, it came back around. Sometimes you just gotta shoot some shit at the wall and see what sticks, man. Like, make it happen. You know what I mean? Any which way possible, just mm. get, just make it happen. If anyone does want to support us as well and help us a little bit, where can they do that? How can they do that? So, the number one thing you can do is just keep supporting the YouTube channel. If you want to support even more, then we do have Patreon. We upload like behind the scenes stuff on Patreon. Um, we're also gonna fly one of you, someone out, who, whoever's a Patreon member, we're gonna fly a Patreon member out to the finish line. So that'd be sick. Beyond that, you know, like we've got great sponsors. We've got Perfect Ted, we've got Huel, Hoka as well. So like, if you go and support them, that also helps. Mate, above all of that, it can't be forgotten that we are raising money for charity. We've got we've over 55K raised for charity now, which is unreal. But if you want to support charity, then we'll chuck the link to our GiveStar page down below. 100% of the money goes to charity. Cut a pint is yeah. a fiver. Okay, yeah. so if you if you give up one pint... You donate a fiver, the government donates some extra as well. I think it's 20%. So they 25, 25, 25, yeah, so it's so £6.25. £6.25 hmm. as well. So let's go fleece the UK government and run up the, uh, the GiveStar page. And if every single person watching this video gives up a pint, which, you know, it's October, so it's October, give up your pint. If every single person watching this video did that, we'd raise half a million pounds for charity in a day. That's pretty lit. I'm gonna eat a donut now. What you got playing there? I was just saying to Jared that I was just listening to this playlist called The Most Beautiful Songs in the World. It's not one of my playlists. Mm. It's just a vibey playlist. And I was just listening to it for the entire two hours and it put me in a trance-like state. I, I love stuff like forgot that. I was running, it was great. Yeah, right, some nice shared the rain. Okay. Bye bye. The rain was coming down hard now, completely changing the landscape. When it rains in the rainforest, it rains. It's like nowhere else in the world. The falling water is so thick you can barely see in front of you, but for me running, it's a godsend. Instantly cooling the air and allowing me to move more freely and save my energy, even if I do get a bit moist. That said, it was worrying for our crossing into Nigeria. When I got to the next stop, we discussed if there was any alternative route. So there's definitely no way we can cross that border well, there, no? No. I think it would be a bit foolish to go for it because nobody has done it. The only one person I know of going to that border, that's us, I himself. <laughs> so I have some experience on the border. The last time I was there, about a year ago, police wasn't too happy that I was driving straight into a war zone as a tourist. Really, like I heard the stories of locals, really sketchy stuff had happened. At the time I was there, it was pretty stable, but yeah, it could be even like, even the police, they're like also very suspicious. Aren't you like uh, a spy? Like, why are you driving as only tourist in this zone? Yeah. There's a lot of, this checkpoint after checkpoint after checkpoint after checkpoint, because no other person has a report successfully about crossing this border, maybe it's not the most wise thing. Right. The reason we had to take such a diversion to cross a tricky border was due to a conflict surrounding the easiest border that made it closed for tourists. During colonial times, most of Cameroon was a French colony, but a small pocket of the country was a British colony. What that leaves behind today is two areas with huge cultural differences and a language barrier. A group of Anglophones felt that their people were being neglected and having their unique culture destroyed by the Cameroonian government and so want independence, which led to a long period of intense conflict which still goes on today. 
This makes that border a very difficult, very dangerous option that we want to avoid at all costs. Look at this beautiful produce that Gus has brought back for us. What have you brought us, sir? I uh, just went into the forest. We got some leaves, some something that I've been told is aubergine. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like an eggplant to me. <laughs> well, it's going to be nice. We're going to make like a uh, kind of a fried rice kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be tasty. Hunter gatherer Gus. <laughs> How are you feeling about everything at the moment? Like, there's a lot of moving parts going on at the moment. Um, I mean, the landscape is forever changing. Gus coming in has helped a lot. It's good energy mm. to have for me. It, there's just a few things that he's come in and done and like it's reminded me of the standard that I need to be at. I think he's done that for all of us, to be honest. Yeah. Partly him being brilliant and also partly just having someone completely fresh-faced. He, in a very impressive way, is extremely disciplined. He has those values instilled in him very naturally. I think it's just reminded me that there's always levels to go up. Got to keep trying to find a level, mm. basically. When the 4x4 is here, I think things are going to be a lot easier. So I'm kind of like, just f***ing want it. It's just been too long, man. Mm. Like, it's taken too long. Like, it's like the final, final little hurdle of being a four-man operation, which we never really should have been. Well, we had to be a four-man operation, but... Mm. So I think it's it's just moving on to the next level of how we can operate, really. Yeah. But we've operated as a four-man at... An unsustainable for, capacity. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah. And this will just give us the room to push yeah. harder. And I think... On every front. When you ask yourself and the people around you to operate at an unsustainable capacity, things are going to go wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, things are just going to go wrong. Well, uh, and like, well, you're just not going to operate at an optimal level or like an uh, optimal level of happiness, satisfaction. You know, there's always a cost. There's always, always, always a cost. We've done pretty good as a four and it was probably naive to think that anything was going to go better than it did, I think. Uh, but I just think as a six, we're just going to be, it's going to be better. I'm going to be unstoppable, level. mate. I've been able to handle like the, the workload that we've set the bar at, but it's taken every like ounce of mental energy which leaves you at a point where when there's room to like push further beyond where you're working the, the motivation to do that is, yeah. is hard i think to find. also like what happens is because it's unsustainable like you can make like you can get to that level other things get sacrificed whether that's me starting getting injured more or you're not cutting your hair. <laughs> Legit. Like, you just don't look after yourself the same, do you know what I mean? Like, it's Legit, just... Like, all personal care has yeah, gone out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, and that's fine for a bit, but you do that for a while and then other things start, like, just basically, the longer it goes on, the more mm. things will start slipping. It doesn't take long for something pretty f***ing catastrophic to happen. Just been a f***ing lot of learning, learning curves. For all of us, I think. Sometimes I really have a hard time, but... That's what I signed up for, mm. so like, f***ing get on with it, do you know what I mean? I think it's just harder in ways that I didn't expect, do you know what I mean? It's hard in all the ways that I thought it was going to be hard, but then there was ways where I didn't realise, and then I, but they're, they're the ones where you learn the most, isn't it? Like, just from a managing a business point of view and leadership point of view, that's been one of the biggest struggles for me. Like, I really, like, really, really have found that difficult. And a lot of hills in the last few days. <laughs> They're, in so many they're not hills, man. 758 meters of elevation today. F off with that, do you know what I mean? Just f off. Okay, right, we're gonna make some food. Alright. Sleep tight. In the next episode, we meet cocoa farmers, I meet another ginge, and we finally cross the Cameroonian border. <laughs>